friends, it is Tuesday, September 24th, and I was going to say good morning, but it is no longer morning. It, I have just been <laughs> a slow mover today, I'm telling you. Um, I slept super hard last night. Um, I'm like, I went to sleep and I did not wake up until Scott woke me up when he left for work this morning, and my first thought was... It's Sunday. For some reason, I thought it was Sunday, and I looked out the window, and it was still pitch dark outside. And I, my thought was, why is he waking me up when it's still dark? And, and in fact, I even said out loud, but I don't think he heard me because he didn't respond. I said, it's still dark. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait a minute, it's not Sunday. What what day is it? And it took me a little bit to realize. Oh wait, it's Tuesday. <laughs> And then I went back to sleep and I just slept so hard. And when Lucy woke me up um, at 8.30 this morning, or a little bit before 8.30, she always wakes me up because she's hungry. I was just, I was still super tired and not ready to get out of bed, but I slept, I slept good last night, super hard, but I wasn't ready to get out of bed. But I got up and I fed her and I didn't want to take my walk. But I'm like, nope, I'm not even gonna think that way. I'm not even gonna start thinking about not taking my walk and so I went out and I did my walk this morning and I just have been puttering around the house and you know not moving very quick today so it's already afternoon but I wanted to uh, pick up the camera and visit with you a little bit today and uh, I need to do some work in the kitchen I don't have a huge plan for today I just need to get some things done in the kitchen. Um, we had some black eyed peas that uh, Travis shelled a few days ago and I got them blanched last night and then I put them back in the refrigerator and so I need to get those bagged up for the freezer. Um, I've got some kiwi in the refrigerator that have been in there for weeks and I need to check them out and see if they're even still good or salvageable at all and if they are I'm going to get those um, put in the freezer. You know, I, I take them out of their skin and put them, you know, chop them up a little and freeze them on a cookie sheet so that we can use them for smoothies. I also kind of wanted to make some granola today. Um, so hopefully we'll get that done. But we'll just see, we'll just see what the day brings in the kitchen. Like I said, I've been a slow mover today, so I'm not feeling horribly motivated to get a whole lot done. Um, I just got back from taking Travis. He has an, uh, he does some odd jobs or like manual labor for some friends of ours. And um, he was not 100% sure where they lived. And so, because um, Travis has, he's got his own driver's license now. He drives himself places on his own so I don't have to take him. But he's like, Mom, can you go with me and, you know, make sure I find their house because got to go back over tonight and then tomorrow uh, to work with with them and so so that's what I just got back from doing we went and found their house and we made sure and you know, I said Travis you sure you know where they are you want us to drive this route again and he's like no I got it so yeah letting letting your children go and spread their wings is not easy <sighs> and Travis has a job opportunity as soon as we get him a car, we're working on trying to get him his own wheels. And as soon as he, as soon as he gets his own car, um, he has a job opportunity waiting for him. Uh, the only thing that scares me as a mama, mommy's heart. If you if you guys are moms and you can relate, leave a comment in the comment section below about this time of life, young adult children. This is so scary. Uh, but anyway, it's a great job opportunity for him as a starter job and uh, is with the church friends, so his boss is gonna be a great guy, or he is a great guy, but he's gonna be a great guy to work for. The only thing that scares me is that it's an hour away, one way, because we do live out in the basically middle of nowhere. <laughs> so yeah, he's, and it's, so that scares me, especially in the winter time, you know the roads get slippery and stuff and I so I'm just trying not to dwell on that and not to worry about that and just concentrate on this great job opportunity that he has and so he'll be starting that job as soon as he gets a car which we are Scott is furious furiously looking 
to find a car within our budget. So it's not going to be fancy, but he wants it to be sturdy. I told Scott I don't want one of those small compact cars. I want something that has a bit of metal around him, a little bit of substance to it, but um, and fairly low miles if we can. And so with, with the money that we have to work with, which is not a great deal, um, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to find a car that fits those parameters, <laughs> that fits our budget. But anyway, we're hoping that will happen very soon within the next couple of weeks. Travis will have his car and he'll start his job. So I will keep you updated on that because I know I'll be saying, asking for prayers <laughs> for me, for his safety and for me, for my comfort. Cause I, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to let him fly. I tell ya. So anyway, that's that. Um, I had mentioned in my last vlog, I believe, that Olivia was going, or at least a couple of weeks ago, Olivia was going to go take her driver's test. Well, she didn't pass. Um, parallel parking has got her stumped. She's been trying, practicing, and practicing, and practicing that parallel parking. So she goes back again this week on Thursday, and hopefully she will nail that parallel parking. She did fine in everything else. It was just the parallel parking. And if you can't parallel park, it's an immediate, you don't pass, which I, I personally find stupid, but that's the laws in the state of Indiana. So we have to deal with it. So anyway, she's been practicing and practicing and practicing. So hopefully she'll get it this time. So that's coming up on Thursday. And as soon as she gets her driver's license, then the next step will be trying to find her a vehicle and get her employed somewhere. So yeah, a lot of changes going on. Of course, I start my job in a couple of weeks and I'm really excited about that. So lots of changes in the on the horizon for us and for our family. Um, uh, another announcement or thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is that I had been kicking around the idea for a while of doing Vlogtober. I did Vlogtober last year and I was pretty much set that I was going to do it this year and then I got hired for that job and I started, started in October and so I'm like I'm not sure what that's going to look like but I know it's just going to be part-time and so I thought well maybe I could still attempt to do Vlogtober so that's I'm going to be doing an announcement video with all of that for if when I decide for sure there will be an announcement video on that um, if you want me to do Vlogtober, put a link in the, or put a comment in the comment section below. Um, also, as part of Vlogtober, I was thinking about doing another question and answer Q&A video. So you guys can start giving me your questions now and I will keep track of them. And when I get enough questions, I will do a Q&A video. Whether I do Vlogtober or not, I will, I will do a Q&A video if I get enough questions. So start giving me your questions um, and I'll keep track of those. So one other thing I wanted to share with you before I get going in the kitchen is that, as you know, I have a greenhouse and it went really, really good for the first part of, for spring and the first part of summer. And then when it got super hot, then of course the greenhouse got super hot and we kind of just didn't do anything in the greenhouse for the last couple of months. But I do want to do some fall and winter uh, vegetables. And so as soon as the weather, we've had beautiful weather for the last couple of days, so I'm hoping it stays that way. But Olivia and I are going to go out um, within hopefully this week and get the greenhouse all cleaned out, all the weeds and everything out of the boxes, get the soil, um, you know, put some amenities in the soil, get it all ready to go, um, get the soil moistened and whatnot because I ordered some heirloom winter friendly or cold weather friendly uh, seeds and they came yesterday so I wanted to share those with you. Um, I need to get the seeds in the ground while it's still warm enough for them to actually germinate. Um, so I don't want to wait till too far into October to do that. We've had a we've had a very warm end of summer and like it's only this is only the second day of fall uh, technically but 
it's been rather warm so I don't know if that trend is going to continue into October or not sometimes we can get some pretty cold temperatures in October it just it just depends but anyway the the um, seeds that I got were from the company seeds for generations seeds for generations and they are heirloom seeds I can't remember where I heard about this company, probably on a YouTube channel. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, but I just put it in my favorites and I thought, you know, when it's time to order fall seeds, seeds for the fall, I'm going to order through Seeds for Generations because you cannot find seeds in the stores this time of year. You just can't. So I got a variety of lettuces because I do love my salads. So I got this. This is a gourmet mix. Little Jim, oh, this one is, I can't, it's a, it's in a different language, so I can't read it. I don't know if you guys can read that. <laughs> That's what kind of lettuce this is. I got different ones that I've never, you know, used, had before. Um, then I got, this is called Tom Thumb. And then I got some spinach. This is called Bloomsdale. And peas, and I thought I would, uh, or they're sugar snap peas. So I know sugar snap peas like cold temperatures or cooler temperatures, and they're normally a spring vegetable, but I thought, well, if they like cooler temperatures, that would work well in the fall as well. And then I got some radishes. These are cherry bell. Radishes. Radishes really like cool weather and they are they stay sweet when the weather's cool. If it gets hot and dry, then that's when your radishes get really spicy. <laughs> and then I've got some more carrots because I really enjoyed I didn't get a huge crop of carrots in my garden or in my greenhouse um, in the spring and summer, but I did enjoy the ones that I that I did have. So I thought, well, I'll try some fall carrots. And these are called scarlet. Nan Nant Nantes? I don't know. So anyway, that those are the seeds that I ordered from Seeds for Generations. This is a it's a family owned company, Jason and Shannon M Matias. Matt I don't know how to pronounce their last name. Um, but if you're interested in ordering seeds from them, and like I said, they're all heirloom, it is www.seedsforgenerations.com. So there's that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get going in the kitchen and I'll bring you along with me. So here's some of the things I wanna get working on today, some produce. Um, we've been getting, this is an okra. And we've just been getting like these little dabs. Maybe I didn't plant enough plants, or maybe it's just because my garden did terrible this year. But so like this is not enough to try to cook up for a meal, like as a side dish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these up in little rounds and stick them in a bag and throw them in the freezer, and then I can just add them to like a vegetable soup in the winter time. So that's what I've been doing them, um, because I'll just get like one or two at a time. And so yeah, it's not enough to mess with. Um, these are the only two <clears throat> acorn squash that I got out of my pitiful garden this year. And they're about, I don't know, size of a softball. So they're small. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven and get them roasting. Olivia and I love this kind of squash, like butternut squash, like winter squash. Uh, Travis and Scott do not, so. This will just be for me and Olivia. Um, this is the, green, the black eyed peas that um, I blanched yesterday and I need to get these just bagged up into smaller bags for the freezer. And then these are the kiwi that I need to work with. They seem to be okay. I don't see any grossness going on. So they've been in the refrigerator for quite a while. They were super, super hard when I bought them. So I stuck them in the fridge thinking I'll mess, you know, I'll deal with them later when they get ripe. <laughs> or I thought, my actual thought was I'd pull uh, one or two out at a time, set them out on the counter for them to ripen. Well, I never did that. They ended up getting stuffed back in the back of the refrigerator and I completely forgot about them. 
So they've been in that refrigerator for probably a month. And I pulled them out thinking, oh man, I bet you they're rotten. <laughs> and they don't look rotten. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and process these and get these in the freezer as well. And then when I get done with that, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I had said I might work on some granola, but I have a ton of bananas in the freezer that I need to use. So maybe I'll make some banana bread instead. We'll see. Well, there's my rooster crow, and you can't have a video from me without roosters crowing. <laughs> the kiwi were still really good so FYI stick your kiwis in the refrigerator <laughs> it gives them a really long life so anyway I'm gonna have Travis take these down put them in the freezer and once they're solid frozen I'll put them in a bag a ziploc bag um, this is the okra I'm just gonna stick this in the freezer up here because I'll just keep adding to it as we get more okra out of the garden and then I got two big bags of black eyed peas to go in the freezer. I already have, I can't remember how many bags. We've had a pretty good year for black eyed peas. I think this might be like the 12th bag, 11th and 12th bag of peas that we've gotten in the freezer this year. So that's great because my family absolutely loves black eyed peas. So this is the recipe that I'm going to be using, the banana nut bread recipe. And this is in my mom's Betty Crocker cookbook. That's why it's so beat up and all the pages are so dirty because my mom had that cookbook for years. And it was the one thing I wanted when she passed away. So I'm very thankful that I was able to get this cookbook of my mom's. These are the ingredients you're going to need. Stevia or sugar, depending on your taste. Shortening, and I use organic shortening all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, chopped walnuts, eggs, milk, and I use almond milk, and of course the star of the show, ripe bananas.
And here they are, all done, fresh out of the oven. Boy, did it make my house smell so good. And they are just absolutely beautiful. Hope you all enjoyed spending the day in the kitchen with me today. I got quite a bit done for being <laughs> kind of a lazy day, an unmotivated day. But I did get some things done that's been on my to-do list, and so I'm very thankful for that. This bread was still a little bit warm when I cut it, but I love warm banana bread with some butter all over it. Of course, I use non-dairy uh, margarine, but still tastes really good. And this was a delicious, delicious banana bread. It is the recipe that my mom always made uh, when I was a kid growing up, so it holds a lot of fond memories for me. Thanks so much for watching, friends and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.